Now we'll talk about another example that we also discussed when we were introducing machine learning. This was specifically whether or not there were patterns of gene expression in biopsies that suggested that patients could be characterized into different molecular groups. This question centers on the discovery of new patterns that we don't yet know how to describe. And for that reason, we decided that an unsupervised learning approach would be the most effective way to identify these patterns. So now we're going to talk about the structure of unsupervised learning problems. As we saw with the supervised examples, we're going to arrange our data in a matrix. In this case, we're going to put our samples in rows, and we're going to put our genes in columns. And this is because we're looking for patterns that distinguish groups of samples. Consequently, our samples, which are in rows, are still the examples that we're working with. And the genes are still the features that we're using to distinguish those samples. However, unlike before, we no longer have labels. We don't know in advance how these samples should group. So for the unsupervised model, because we don't have labels, now we're just going to take the examples and the features. Those are going to get used to create a model. And what that model will be capable of is taking the examples that we provided and separating them into two or more groups based on their gene expression. For example, here, group 1 exhibits low uh, expression in the first set of genes and high expression in the second set of genes, while group 2 shows the opposite pattern. And you can see that, that these samples sort of naturally fall out together from the data, and this is the strength of unsupervised learning. It can find patterns in the data even though we may not understand why those patterns exist. Unsupervised methods are therefore very good at helping us raise new biological questions.